Hey, hello everybody. This is Santa Jerry from Santa Switch Adaptive Toys again. I've been asked how I do the uh, modifications and adaptions for the Fisher Price Koala. So, and, and as you know, every time you choose which uh, function you're going to do or which toy you want to adapt, you got to figure out which function you want to be able to use the switch with. So on here we've got a whole bunch of buttons and, and the like that activate. But I found that the easiest one to use and adapt over is the one here at the top of the palm tree. So this one's already been adapted but it's really easy to show how it got done. So I've already taken the screws out. We can open up the back. And once you open up the back you've got the back of the palm tree off. Pull the front of the palm tree off. And there's a switch right here. And this switch is activated by this dial. And so I'm going to take that switch out so you can see this is necessary anyway. Otherwise you're not going to be able to get to it to solder the connections on. For this I use a uh, let's see, I'm going to use some needle nose pliers and I'm just going to grab across the connections to pull it out. So, and, and again, I, I have made up my uh, stereo cable to be a mono cable in advance. The uh, wiring on this particular stereo cable says red is one side and white and yellow is the other side. I've soldered those to the connections that were already on the uh, switch. Oh good, okay, so now, now, now I get to solder it again because I just played with it and took it apart. Okay, I mean it was working for the demonstration, so now we can actually, let's heat up the soldering iron. We'll get some soldering out. I broke the, I broke the connection. So <laughs> this is actually a, an adaption uh, video, not just, uh, let's see, I want this solder in a different holder. Not just a uh, video of what it's already done. Might be a little longer because I have to wait for the solder to heat up. But the reason I wanted that into a separate connection is because we, we need to really set that set this up. So apparently what I did when I soldered that was not very good. We'll turn this around so that we can see what side we're soldering on. I'm going to bring over a couple of supports here to support the weight of that housing. Okay, so On this case, we've got. I know that I, I know my hand is hiding the wiring, but you, you, it's obvious that there's going to be two connections on that switch that you need to wire to, and you want to make sure you get properly soldered. Actually, I'm, I'm actually glad this worked. Uh, this broke while I was demonstrating it. Not that uh, I like it when toys break, but it makes it a lot. Uh, I would prefer if something's going to go wrong with the toy, it goes wrong with it while I've still got control of it, than for somebody to call me up and tell me that something happened and it's not working properly. Okay, so let's see if my solder is warmed up. I'm going to snag up some more. Yeah, soldering iron is good. So let's put a nice drop of solder on there. Hold it still while it seals up, hardens. Okay, so to test this toy, and I always make sure that they're functioning. We're going to plug in our adapted cord, turn the toy on, and punch the button on our switch, rather, and it works. So this toy does not allow you to interrupt it. I can't, no matter how many times I punch the switch, it does not interrupt the programming. So you have to wait for it to stop running and then you can punch the switch again and it will activate it. So 
so we'll let uh, Koala talk for a moment. And we'll test our switch again our, by punching the remote switch. The adaptive switch. And there he goes, Koala working away. So, now that it's been fixed, we'll put the uh, screw in that held Put the switch back in. Mm, got it kind of in the way there. Okay. Put the switch back in. There was a screw that was holding this as a, a retainer to keep it from being popped out. that back in. So, and you, you may notice on here also on my cable that goes out of the toy, let's turn them off, the cable that goes out of the toy, I put a knot in it. I have found that uh, a lot of people use zip ties. I used to use zip ties. I only bought them by the thousand. But I discovered that uh, there was some problems with them. Sometimes the zip ties fail and that restrain relief that you're putting on it all of a sudden doesn't work and the cord can come out. It'll never come out of there with that knot. So if there's room at all, and I found a lot of toys that have this ability, if there's room at all, put a knot in it and it won't come out. So then that toy goes back together. Move my blocks. So uh, one another aspect to this toy is the position. And you may find that uh, people call you up or, or, or have trouble with the toy working uh, and that is related to the position of this dial. So let's turn it back on. The normal function of the toy is for it to activate when this is rotated. So there it activated. So if the circle is anywhere near this side of the toy there's a possibility that the switch is depressed and it won't you won't be able to use your switch to operate it. Let's see if I can replicate that here. Okay, so it's finished running and I'm going to punch my remote switch. It works. So, but there are some times when it's just holding it over. Let's see, I heard it click. Let's see if it works. Oh, he, wait, I have to wait for, oh, I have to wait for a koala, don't I? Okay. All right. So I, I haven't got it into that position, but when I send these out, I always make sure that the circle is opposite. And that way there's little chance of it interfering with the programming. So there we go. Another Linkables adapted by Santa Switch Adapted Toys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day.